Welcome to this video where I show how to use the program HEC SSP, and, and SSP stands for Statistical Software Package, to do a 17B and a 17C analysis. And I'm going to do this analysis uh, showing when you have what's termed a historic event. Uh, to do this analysis, I'm going to do the Buffalo River near St. Joe. This is a USGS gauge, and the Buffalo River is in the northern part of Arkansas, and it's a tributary to the White River. So I'm going to get the peak stream flow data for this particular site, and I look at the tab separated data. And one thing to notice is that you have a continuous period of record from 1940, so I'm looking uh, right in this area here. So from 1940 all the way down to 2019, I have a continuous period of record, and I have what would be called a historic record or a historic data point in 1915. And you can see it was 142,000. There are some comments, and so the comments, uh, number seven is debris, mud, or hyper-concentrated flow. BD is a day of occurrence is unknown or not exact. So that's obviously up to the person doing the analysis on whether or not they want to incorporate that date. Uh, for the purposes of this demonstration, we are actually going to incorporate that data point. So I like to take the data and get it ready in the DSS file uh, to do the analysis in SSP. There are ways that you can import it directly into SSP. I just prefer to use DSS. So um, whatever your, your preference is is fine. This is just the technique that I tend to use. Now, I don't go through and show the whole technique of how to develop something in DSS view for the interest of time. But if you're having issues with that, let me know and I can create another video that actually shows how to go through and develop DSS files. So I do want to show you that DSS file to kind of show you what it is that I did. So uh, the first thing I do is I take the original data and develop it into a DSS file. So here is that data that I took from USGS and this is in the DSS file. Now I like to sort it by water year so I do a math function where I tell it that I want the peak for each water year and that would be this data. You can see that it gives me one value for every water year and it, it orders it very nicely and you can see that I have 1940 to 2019 uh, right down at the bottom there and then I find for importing it into SSP that it seems to work better if I have it as an irregular century for part E uh, so keep that in mind if you're having problems with getting it to import into SSP Okay, so now we're in SSP, and I want to do the Bulletin 17B and a Bulletin 17C analysis. So the first thing I want to do is import the data. And I'm going to call this uh, about Buffett St. Joe, and then the short ID is going to be St. Joe. Data type is time series. It's going to be a DSS file. And now it's asking me, uh, where do I go to find the DSS file? So it's in my Documents folder, and I select Buffalo River at St. Joe. And now I need to select the DSS path name. And remember, it is this IR Century. And I double-click it. It appears down here. And then I tell it that I want to import it. Um, must have already had some data in there, so I'm just going to tell it, yes, I will overwrite the new data, or overwrite with the new data. Okay, so now that the data is in there, now I want to go in and I want to do a new Bulletin 17 analysis. So this is going to be St. Joe 17B, and I'm just going to call it YouTube. Now for my flow data set, I do want to use the Buffalo River at St. Joe. And I'm going to start out by using a 17B method. I'm not going to change any of these other parameters. Um, again, that's something for you to do in the analysis to determine which of these parameters you want to use. Uh, but this demonstration is just going to be how to get the program to run. And I'm going to use historic data, and I'm going to say that the historic period is 1915 to 1915. And I'm going to put in water year 1915 and say that I have a peak of 142,000 CFS. I'm going to compute it. 
and uh, fortunately it worked and we plot the curve and here we can see that this is our analysis and you can see what it does with the historic data point it actually uh, uh, you can see that it's definitely a different color so instead of being you know a, a blue open circle you know it's more of a light blue closed circle so that's how it identifies on the results what's a historic data point and what is what they call the systematic data points okay so now the 17c is a little bit more involved so now I'm going to say that I want to do a 17c analysis so I'm going to call this um, St. Joe 17c YouTube again I'm going to use the same flow data set and one thing when you, so we have 17C selected, and one of the things you'll notice that I can't go to that historic period data because that's only used with the bulletin 17B. So this actually uses the EMA data. And um, actually one thing I'm noticing is that it's popping up with 1898. Um, so I'm actually going to cancel this for, and say no and I'm actually going to go look at the data and one thing sometimes when you import data into SSP and it's one thing I forgot to do with the 17b analysis but one thing that you do want to do is check the data and I'm going to allow editing and I don't know where this 1898 came from um, I know I don't want it in there so I'm going to tell it to delete that row and get rid of it and then I can save it so in reality, I probably should have done that for 17B. I don't think that it affected the results, but anyway, just keep that in mind that you do want to check your data when you import it into SSP. So we'll once again create this analysis. And we select the data set that we want and again remember that in your options you can't use historic data so you go to the EMA data and you can see here that I have in all of my systematic data um, but I want to include that historic data point okay so what I need to do is I need to go in I need to change this because in reality I have data from 1915 to 2019 but 1916 to 1939 is actually missing and uh, for missing data they use these perception thresholds and so the way that they describe it in the manual is that since you had this 142,000 CFS value that was perceived in 1915 that they're going to assume that anything that occurred after that and prior to your systematic record that it must have been less than 142,000 because it wasn't recorded. So whether or not that's a good assumption or not, I don't know, but we're going to, to go with that uh, to set our perception threshold. So we're going to say that it had to be from, that a low threshold was um, 142,000 and that, there we go. Sometimes it's a little bit hard to get to this set as infinity. Um, I don't know why that's difficult to get to, but you, you can't just type it in. At least I found you can't type it in it. You have to actually click it. Um, and so I'm going to put in that I'm going to apply these thresholds and I'm going to put yes. And I'm happy with what this did, but I need to alter 1915. And so we put in 142,000 as the peak, 142,000, because you do need to set a low and a high value. And it's no longer a sensor, but it's a historic data point. Now, 1916 to 1939, that is just censored, right? It's just missing. And then once 1940 uh, starts up, then you can see that you have 1940 all the way through 2019 with the actual data. And you can see that the data type is systematic. Now we're going to compute. Hopefully this works. It does work and the compute is complete. And again, we can plot the curve 
and you can see that once again it gives us our result and it also once again it highlights this historic data point in uh, this uh, shaded blue shaded light blue color um, so hopefully that um, helps you understand a little bit better the process for doing a 17b and a 17c analysis um, and remember um, check your data when you put it into ssp and make sure that the data is correct we did notice that on the 17c analysis but you should also do that for the 17b analysis so hopefully this was helpful to you um, feel free to subscribe to the channel if you want to know when i have a new video that comes out thanks for watching